Hello Year 10 and uh, welcome back to uh, Remote School with your host Mr Whale. Hope that lockdown isn't too boring. This is a short but very important video on the rules about drawing force arrows. So uh, forces I hope you've learnt by now are vectors. They have a size and they must act in a given direction and you can show this on a diagram using a force arrow. And quite often in books force arrows are not drawn um, as the course needs you to draw them so please pay careful attention to the rules we're going to go over now and learn about how to draw force arrows properly so the first one is um, you need to start from the center of the object on which the force acts so we're gonna uh, be thinking about forces on uh, a banter bus here and all the forces are going to start from the center of the bus so uh, that is if I can just plug in the stuff I need to plug in Yeah, so we're working here, apologies for that. So um I don't know. Maybe a green will will do it. Here's about the uh, center of the banter bus. So all of our forces are going to start from this point and it's known as the object's center of mass. And we don't need to cover it too much for this course, but it's the point at which you can consider that all the object's mass um could be based in um, if we were to simplify it into just like a little dot. So this is the center of mass, it's the center of, uh, of where we could say the the weight would act if, it, if the whole bus was just, all the mass in it was just condensed into a single point. So all of our forces are going to start from this center point of the object. Um, the next thing then is to uh, use a pencil and a ruler and I, I've got a ruler here um, here's my ruler um, and a pencil. Well, I don't have a pencil, but you hopefully do. So, the longer a force arrow is, the greater the force is. And sometimes you don't need to be quantitative, you don't need to use numbers, and sometimes you do. So, in this example, we have a quantitative case, and we're given a scale up here a thousand newtons is equal to one centimeter length of the arrow. So I've got to draw and represent um, on a diagram a weight using a force arrow of 10,000 newtons. So my scale needs to be, my arrow, excuse me, needs to be 10 centimeters long. So I start from the center and I draw an arrow 10 centimeters in length. There you go, one straight line using a ruler from the center of the object. Um, and the weight obviously acts towards the center of the earth. So finally we have a thrust of 5,000 newtons. So we take our ruler and we go here, we line it up properly and we draw an arrow 5 centimeters. You need to be accurate to a millimeter, the uh, resolution of your measuring apparatus for the purposes of the exam. So, force arrows are drawn, uh, are represented with one straight line using a pencil and a ruler. The longer the arrow is, the bigger the force is. Um, and you're not interested in the width of the arrow at all. It doesn't mean anything to a physicist. So don't fall into that trap. And you always start from the center of the um, object, the center of mass. So this is the convention I recommend. Um, so please when you're doing activities using force arrows when you're asked to put them on diagrams follow those three simple rules. Uh, thank you very much.